What's up everybody? Today on Lunatic Froggy, we're going to react to something a little bit different. We're going to react to one of my friends, Will the Trill. This is his page. We're going to react to my tragic experience as a child. As he asked me to react. Hey everyone. This is Will the Trill here. Once again, um... Hi Will. I am extremely thankful for all of you helping me reach 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Let's go, Will. Do, do. Let's go, Will. Congratulations on the 1K subs. I am very, very thankful. I'm very, very grateful for that. So uh, a huge majority of you have seen my video of CPTSD episode caught on camera. And... Um, Okay, so CP, I'm going to explain real quick. CPTSD is Childhood Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder. Um, it stems from when you were a child. So that is what CPTSD is. There were one or two trolls that commented on that here and there, but... There has to be a couple heartless people, you know? But a lot of you showed your love, showed your Amen support, and uh, I highly appreciate it. So since a lot of you have seen that video, I figured for today, I, um, I'll i um, tell you the trauma that I've been through in my childhood. Just so you all know, I'm not going to rush this video or speed it up or anything along those lines. I'm going to let you ex listen to what he has to say, as this has been going in with all the things that I have been discussing lately. What is multiple sclerosis? What is fibromyalgia? And I have a couple more coming up. My child, ex both of my children have what he has, which is childhood post-traumatic stress disorder and PTSD or CPTSD comes from a traumatizing time in their life or an event. So in that in words like that, I will let him continue. 90% of it was from my abusive father who was verbally and who was, uh, who was verbally and physically abusive towards me pretty much all my childhood. Since I was four or five years old. I'm going to try to get through this without breaking down. I know this is really hard for him. And that's why he's taking such long pauses in between. It's because it's hard. There were times when, since I was on the autism spec, well, I shouldn't say who I was. I'm on the autism spectrum, obviously. I did end up and I was diagnosed at bit. age it's a, two. It's a 39 minute video. I'm not going to be able to react to it all, but I did speed it up just a little to 1.25 just so that way I can get most of what he's trying to say out there. I'm not going to critique him because talking about childhood experiences is really hard. Um... I could talk about mine, but I would do exactly what he's doing, if not worse. Um, I have had nightmares still to this day of some of the things that I have seen, witnessed as a child. So, 100% will I feel you. Sorry I had to speed it up just a little bit. But we had to get through it so it wasn't like an hour long video because I talked to.
after having delays and some stuff. Apparently, I've said in other videos that my dad has borderline personality disorder, so that made it obvious that borderline personality disorder is where you have multiple. Here, let's look this up. Okay, so if we go to John Hopkins, which is a website I love, um, symptoms of borderline personality disorder. Um, it starts during the teen years. It lasts, they can have at least five of these. A pattern of severe mood changes over hours or days, extreme anger or problems, controlling anger, strong up and down relationships with family and friends that can go quickly from very close to anger to hatred, extreme fear of reactions to abandonment and extreme behaviors to avoid abandonment. A rapidly ch change, changing sense of self that can cause sudden changes in goals, values, or behaviors, feeling disconnected from themselves, their body, or reality, or having paranoid thoughts, ongoing feelings of emptiness, self-destructive behaviors such as, a, as substance use or misuse, binge eating, Safe, unsafe sex with multiple partners, unsafe driving or reckless speeding, suicide attempts or self harm behaviors such as cutting hair, pulling or burning. Um, that's just some of the symptoms. Now, if we go up here, it says borderline personality disorder is a kind of mental health problem it may also be called emotionally un emotionally unstable personality disorder people with bpd have unstable moods and can act recklessly they also have a hard time managing their emotions if you have bpd you may have problems with daily tasks obligations and life events you may have trouble keeping jobs and relationships and you may use food, alcohol, or other substances to cope. So that is BPD. So let's get back to him. He absolutely did not have the patience and mental uh, stability to raise a special needs child, specifically uh, a child on the autism spectrum. Uh, BPD does not have it. You're, you are right. So my disability, it came with, um, stimming. The way I describe it, the way I think of it is I, your, your mind is like spinning around and a lot is going on. Like your favorite scene is playing in your head, like something very exciting coming up or whatever. Could be your favorite song too. And then all of a sudden you have this big boost of energy. It's, it's like you're very high and you, uh, and you're just running and skipping and jumping around and, uh, making some vocal sounds. In a way, yes. Well, apparently, especially, uh, at home, every time this, that, that would happen, my, my father would just, uh, Scream at me, William, stop jumping around. I dealt with that too, William. But I I couldn't stop and I I It's okay. I couldn't I couldn't help it. Uh I just um it was, um, I don't know if I should call it a habit or it, it just happens. And, and so my, my father would get so angry and then he would, he would hit me. He would, he would literally grab me and slap me across my face, literally slap me in the face and scream in my face.
It's like he, he'd be he'd be screaming in my face. Do as you're told. Um, could you put a trigger warning on this? Cause um, I think I'm gonna go have nightmares, and I'm not. Oh, I'm not trying to be an asshole about that. That is exactly what my dad did. Why can't you just do as you're fucking told? Do what you're fucking told. I'm the parent. You do what you're told. I 100% am with you, will you? My, even just little things would just set him off, literally. And it's like just one, a couple little things that, that I would do, like just being a child, like, like especially a curious young child with autism and he would, um, it's like he, he would, he would scream at me. He would, he would go, um, he'd be like, get over here. He'd be like, he's standing over here. Stand right here. But I, I'd be afraid to. I like no way. No way would I. Uh, would I approach him if he's like that? Because I, I'd be scared. He'd be slapping me. He'd be hitting me. He'd be clunking me on the head. Literally, even little things like he would. He he would literally clunk me on the head. Literally like this. We're literally right here. Literally just like that. I wanted to pause this. You can see the pain in your eyes. Just reliving all of this. And the fact that you're coming out and speaking about it. Is more than what most people can do. Um, luckily for me. I have. Where I block things out. Bad things happen to me. I block them out. Out of sight, out of mind. Don't remember it. And the fact that you're coming forth and saying all this on camera is truly amazing. And I 100% respect you, Will. And there was one time where... Uh... I was just being curious and I was curious of sound and because I was in one of the rooms that uh, a house we lived in that had a uh, steam heat and had the house was built in 1949, by the way, and it had those big cast iron steam radiators. Of course, I was curious and I um, I was in one of the rooms where uh, where my sister and I had our toys in and I was like six, seven years old and. Because um, since I knew the, how um, the steam radiators would sound, would make these little bit of banging sounds when they would warm up. And then, so I used one of those rounded up play blocks and I, uh, so I would, and so I would, um, I would, I, so I'd be, so this one time I was tapping on the, uh, shut off valve of that steam radiator just to uh, duplicate the uh, sound that it would make when it, I, I wasn't banging on it or anything like really hard or anything, but I was, I was tapping on it enough to uh, make duplicate the sound. And then, and then, and then, Again, I, I I wasn't banging on it really hard or anything. I was just tapping on it. My father, my father stor storms into the room. Then he he grabs the back the back of my uh, the back of my neck like this, and then then he sl then he he slams my the top of my face right here, right onto the radar like three four times. And then I I, I was crying, and then 
I don't remember what he said, but he screamed at me. And nobody deserves that. This is hard for me to talk about, but like the, for what my father said to me that really hurt me to this day, that still hurts me. It's like the most hurtful things he ever said to me was, you'll never fit in. You'll never make it in life. That, that hurt me bad. Especially my own father would say something like that to me. It's like he was angry the way I turned out. The way he acted towards me when... I forgot to mention that he always did this. He did all this shit to me when, when every time he was in a bad mood. Like something pissed him off. He was having a shitty day at work and he would take it out on me. He would take it out on my mother and my sister something to vent his anger. I was, I was mostly the main, I was mostly his main punching bag, like his mental and even physical punching bag. His act, those actions are inexcusable. Amen to that. Well, look at me now. I'm, I'm a mess. I, I have complex PTSD all because of this. So I'm going to try to talk, talk, um, tell you more. So I remember one time being, uh, back in 07, back in 2007, I was in eighth grade and my father was picking me up from bowling. And then, um, I think he, uh, mistaked another kid that was uh, stimming and he thought it was me. And then from the distance and then I wasn't doing any of that. So. So I get into his truck and I was, he was picking me up from after school bowling. And then, then he goes, William, you were, you were jumping around like an idiot in there. Then, and then, then I was like, what? No, I wasn't. And then, and then from the driver's seat, I was sitting in the passenger seat. Then, then, then he, he slapped me twice, like really hard across the, my face. Then he screams in my face. Yes, you fucking were. And holding my phone, that 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 was how close he was to my face. And this is literally a man who's six foot four and two hundred and twenty pounds. That's what was scary about him. And um, what was most scary about him is that um, he was an I was asshole. I was scared about whether he was going to be uh, in a good mood or a bad mood. What first made me uh, aware, one of the reasons why it was like that is because when, was when uh, my, fa my father came home from work and uh, I was, it was, a, it was a fairly nice day outside and I was, I was watching a movie and then he literally turns the TV off on me and then he goes, goes, come on, outside. And, then, and, um, And so I would go outside and my mother would be outside. Then I would come to, I went to my mother to go, mom, dad, turn the TV off on me. And then that's when she told me, oh, oh, he's in a, he's in a bad mood. And so that's what made me aware of uh, his mood swings. That's what was most scary about this is whether uh, that was the most scary because it was like uh, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde type of thing. When he was in a good mood, he was fine. He was, he'd be helpful. He'd be supportive. He'd be playful. He'd be funny. That was what was most scary about it. And uh, whenever he'd be working on cars, like uh, he'd be happy to see me uh, watch him go to work, uh, watch me learn from him and he would show me what to do, and I learned a lot from him. That that was the good things about my father. I, I learned a lot of it from him, I'm from how to work on cars and some other stuff. 
I'm glad you can point out the good things that you have with your father because not a lot of people who are in your situation ha that have gone through the, all of this can pinpoint the uh, good times. They normally stimulate to all the bad things that had happened. So I'm really proud of you for being able to... I learned a lot from him. I learned how to do all this stuff because of him. But what you're explaining here runs in between a narcissist, a abuser, and BPD. I think he had a lot more issues than just BPD because he... I'm sorry you ever had to go through that. Seriously, I am. When he was in a good mood, he was he was he was protective and everything. That was very scary. But when he was in a bad he was in a bad mood, he was a totally different person. He's a complete asshole, he's a monster, he's abusive. That was the most scary, like the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, the literally like a switch, like a whoosh, the whoosh. And it's literally little things that can set it off to, um, it's not just, as he said, be the kid would set it off. It could literally be he woke up and seen the sun was shining and apparently he didn't like how the sun was shining in his eyes and it would it can set him off. When you're in a situation like that I understood Will couldn't do nothing because he was a child. But his mother should have. His mother should have grabbed the kids and left. Because let me tell you, if anybody put my son's face in a radiator, there would not be a body left to find. So let's continue. What was also traumatizing is like seeing him abuse my sister and, uh, he and hearing her... Uh, Hear her scream, ow, and then cry. And then we were at the dinner table and then my sister was in the habit of being a fast eater. And then, then my father would yell at her. He would yell, slow down. And if she didn't do it the first time, he would, he would clunk her on the head really hard like this, literally right at the dinner table in front of me, in front of my mother. And then Again, the bitch would have been had a shotgun to his face if that was my children. And also seeing my poor mother like 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 yell yelling, Chris, stop it. Like Chris, don't hit him. And my poor mother like had to put up with it. And also traumatizing a lot of the times, like uh seeing him and my mother fighting and it would get loud. It would get pretty ugly. And But you know, this is the only thing I give my father a lot of credit. He never actually hit her. Thank God about that. Why would he want to hit the woman? My father Why never hit my mother. Just abuse the children and get away with it. I find it a little surprising and I, and I find it a very good. I'm, I should be very glad that he never hit her. As or else, it would have been a lot more scary, like seeing my father hit mom. Thank God he didn't. See, I had the case scenario where daddy would hit children and the mommy. And abuse is, I think, 19th out of 10, he was mentally abusive. 
And he was also the type of person that, baby, I can change. You don't have to leave. I can change. Type of person. Um, to be fair, a lot of women that are in abuse do not recognize the signs of abuse. But, to be frank, when your kid is getting their head smashed into a radiator, I don't care what you want to call it, that's abuse. There's no reason to put your kid's head into a radiator. That's abuse. 100%. I, I give him tons of credit not hitting her. I don't. Because I thought he would. The way they fought, I thought he was going to hit her. It's like I, I looked at all of this as normal. I thought this was normal. And children raised in this situation do. Okay, as you guys see, I put me on there too. Um, the only reason I did that is because of the simple fact that I am talking while he's ta in between his talking, and I want you to see me too. He, he was like this to me pretty, pretty much all my childhood. And And, and, and my sister's a mess, but she doesn't even want to talk about this. I, I never asked her about it. I... She's probably like me and just like blocks. But my out. sister, she grew up tough as nails. We normally She's do. a very tough woman. Very tough. You try to fuck with her, she, she, would, she, would, she, would, she would tear you apart. But the damage is done. I don't think I would ever forgive my father. Don't forgive your father. I let some other things out. And forgive him there were times when I'd be upstairs in my room and. Well, 100% forgive him for yourself and not himself. Okay. Because the more you hold on to it, the more it does affect you. Coming from someone who was abused as a child. Do not forgive them for yourself. For like, do not forgive them for them. Forgive them for yourself. And that's what I was trying to say. Because it will help you. I promise you. He's raging. He was, he'd be angry. And then I'd be afraid to come to him. And then if I heard him yell, William, get down here now. Then I, I'd be afraid to. I'd be afraid that he would, that, that he would be screaming in my face or hitting me. And then he would storm upstairs into my room and he would grab me in the back of my neck and then he would literally drag me down the stairs and then that way uh, my feet, my feet were, were, were like pop, 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 pop down the stairs. Then that's when he would start slapping me in my face. He, I'd be crying and... But the worst part about it is um, my mother my mother told my sister and I not to talk about about it to anybody don't don't tell our teachers at school don't tell anybody about this because I uh, because um, I figured out later that she was scared about what would happen I, I have a strong belief that my mother was scared that um, both my sister and I would get taken away and um, she was scared that she would never see uh, her kids again. I have a strong belief that's the reason why she told us to keep our mouths shut.
All right, well, I'm going to interject here. What happens in this house stays in this house. Now, I used to say that all the time. Because my children would, my children would go to school and say something and leave out crucial details. Like, gee, I don't know. My daughter went to go swim in the swimming pool, joking around. Uh... Roy called out the window, don't forget the shampoo and conditioner. Automatically, people thought that she, we had no running water, which, how did we fill the pool then? Um, but they ran their mouths. So, again, I mean, I, was a, I wasn't a good parent at that point in time. And my ex used to scream that all the time. And it wasn't until I left the situation that I realized how abusive he was. But it wasn't out of fear. It was to cover up the abuse at home. Because you know how your mother would have got you back? She would have had to go take parenting classes. And she would have had to leave your father. Easy, simple. Let's continue. But I remember slipping a couple of times, like not revealing uh, every detail, but my mother, she would kind of yell at me. See, she'd be like, William, do you, what I remember is like, she would say, do you want to get taken away? But then my father, he'll get really angry and then say, shut the fuck up. And then, And that's the other thing. Um, some family members, a couple of relatives, and a couple of times they uh, saw this. And but the problem was they dismissed it as normal because um, they were used to um, corporal punishment as the norm back then. Mm, that explains. But only one of them were concerned and then opened up to my mother. That's according to what my mother told me. And. Uh, but at least my father was open that he said that he was abused. He was abused himself. Him and his twin brother, who was my uncle. Doesn't give him excuse. Him and his twin brother were abused by their father, who was my grandfather. God rest his soul. And, um, but he was, um, but he was good to, uh, their sister, who was my aunt. The typical daddy's a little girl, daddy's a little princess. What was different on my father is that he was pretty much just as bad to me as to my sister. I'm sorry. He was about just as bad to my sister as he was to me. It was because of his anger that um, from a shitty day at work, whatever pissed him off, even little things that pissed him off. He would just get so angry and then... I just went through being dragged down the stairs... And my feet hitting the stair the steps while he'd be dragging me down the stairs. I went through uh, being clunked on the head really hard like five times. Like getting kicked in the back a couple times while I was on the floor. And being thrown on the couch. I was I went through uh, being pounded like like because he, he would be screaming to go to sleep. Like he would say one word after each time, he'd be like, go to sleep. Why don't you listen to all this shit? Because you're a child. Well, there's a lot more in my head, but it just a lot of it just won't come out through my mouth. That I'm trying to get it out, but it just won't come out. But hold. All right, guys, 
I had to stop there because this is getting very long. As I said, I won't be able to watch it all. Well, what you went through was very abusive and very wrong, and I'm very sorry. I greatly apologize for the, the traumatic experiences that you went through as a child. I'm glad I got to react to this as I myself was in similar situations. And what he's talking about what with the um what he was talking about with the my dad abused me, so I'm gonna abuse my children is can called general generational trauma generational abuse well if my dad did it i'm gonna do it but you guys i love you and I, please go show will the trail some great love i hope you have a great day love y'all bye